Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and this is the saddest and most pointless part of Below Zero. I have been told that I need to make Alan's body. The components for his body are all the way up there. Through a series of winding caves that all look the same, filled with Shadow of Iathans. I don't even have any beacons left on me, so to drop a beacon at progress, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk the prawn suit into this base. Um, I'm not allowed to, so I guess I'll just leave it here and hope nobody eats it. Whatever. So anyway, that's how we're going to leave a beacon for this location. This thing seems a lot more broken than it should be, so let's get out and fix that. If you could just not, that would be wonderful. That motherfucker! I've never even used that thing! I literally have never used the prawn suit and it's been eaten now. The resale value on this thing is ruined. Also, holy shit, he dealt over 50% to it. I guess I'll take the hit myself if he comes again since, you know, my vehicles can't really afford it right now. That's fine, you can hit me. I've got first aid kits, it'll be okay. And my attitude towards the Shadow Leviathans is not a good thing. Now, he seems to have failed. I can hear the deafening sound of fish moving, but whatever. Now, let's get the fuck out of here. We have backtracking to do. Boy, howdy, do we have a lot of backtracking to do. It'll take me a while, because I'm going to keep getting eaten along the way. So... I have even worse news than the fact that I'm going to have to backtrack a lot, making this video unusually short, because I'm going to be cutting out the backtracking. You see, I don't just have to backtrack a lot to do this. When I come back down here, I'm going to have to backtrack some more. Because there's no exit down there that I saw. Or at least that I don't think. And even if there is, I've... If the game is not over, I've got to bring my sea truck back up, right? The music is very scary for what's honestly not a very scary biome. Like, Shadow Leviathans can be spooky, but these crystal caves are not a spooky biome. They are, like, PS1 JRPG biome. They are not scary. They might be beautiful. They are definitely not spooky. So, only now am I realizing just how big the Crystal Caves are. Uh, this is on the scale of the Lost River. It might actually be bigger than the Lost River. Which is quite funny to me that this could be bigger than Lost River. Because on the whole, Below Zero has been a very small game. The land segments felt impossibly large and like I couldn't keep track of everything. But every time I've explored in the water, it's felt like every biome I came to was unacceptably small. Like. There is a single adult vent garden. That's the whole biome, is this area surrounding the vent garden. And then they put in a massive filter so you couldn't realize how small it is because the blue filter stops you from realizing it's just the one vent garden and nothing else. The purple vents are similarly incredibly small. There are really only three full-size biomes, it feels like, in the actual sub, you know, aquatic part of Subnautica. And that's the twisty bridges the lily pads, and the caves, uh, the crystal caves. And maybe I'm just like blind in my nostalgia, but I feel like Subnautica 1 was much, much larger. Maybe there wasn't anything in it worth exploring, but you didn't know that when you were exploring. This game just doesn't feel like it has the same sense of wonder. And I lost so much goodwill towards the game because of the land segments that I'm having a really hard time dealing with the backtracking now at the end of the game. And especially the reason the backtracking upsets me so much, I think, is because a lot of people complained about this same fucking problem in Subnautica 1. And it doesn't seem like they learned anything from it. 
And I wonder if maybe those same small biomes that you have limited visibility in to prevent you from seeing how small they are, are also biomes with pop-in issues. I wonder if that was actually even a choice that was made. Just like, on the whole, Subnautica Below Zero, I think, this might be mechanically vastly better. I don't experience pop-in the way that I did in the other game. I think the sound quality of the monsters is better. I like a lot of things involving building bases far more than I did in the first Subnautica. The upgrade system of the truck, I like more than the upgrade system of the Cyclops, which just became a base, or the Sea Moth, which just added boxes to the outside. Like, everything involving the progression systems of the game and the way the game physically works, how stable it is and what I'm doing, is better. But the actual world the game is in feels vastly inferior to me. Which is really sad, because like, while I was exploring it, I was having a good time, but like, now that I find myself at the end of it, I'm dreading finding out how much is left, because I know it's all going to be backtracking, and for some reason, I guess there must have been an update at some point or something. I have a vicious flickering in my base now. It's not the worst, it's pretty playable, but yeah, that's not okay. Also, I just want to point out, these things you get, root pustules in the Seawaki case, one of the earliest resources you find, literally only used to build a part of Allen. Does not seem like good design, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, with the exception of one Kyanite, which I will need to find when I go back, that's it. Theoretically, this could be the end of the game. So let's go for one last walkthrough of my base. And I haven't ever done this, I realize now. My observatory is so much nicer now that I planted the eye jellies, isn't it? I can see just how ridiculous they are. I can go down, I can look at all my plants, I can gorge myself on peppers, which as everyone knows is the best source of hydration in all the high seas. I can look at all this source of infinite food I have, I can go down, see my bioreactor. Is it full? Of course it is. I can sleep in one of my numerous and beautiful beds. Um, I think this is a manual's bed. Uh, apparently not enough space. I'll sleep on this one then. Whatever. And now that I'm not trying to go to bed, it seems like the jukebox should be on, doesn't it? Because this is the victory lap. This is... It's not a victory lap, it's backtracking, let's not pretend, but... We're done. Let's take stock of what we have, look at all this ridiculous shit, all this food I will never fucking need. My coffee machine. My vast collection of knickknacks, photos, and posters. And glitched out art. I do wonder... Who allegedly was supposed to have made that? We're on the other side of the planet. We can go look at our alien containment. Behold all of our tiny predators, especially the squid shark. I won't be getting in there myself. My tri-valve is probably swimming around somewhere outside. And if I go all the way down, I come down to my nuclear reactor. Still going strong. My nuclear waste disposal. My large and unnecessary storage room. It'd be a shame, wouldn't it? If I didn't remember to completely destroy the still suit before I left. I don't need any of that, I'll just be leaving it there, but fuck the still suit. My moon pool, my command center. Oh, my water purification center. Isn't that nice? All that water I need, like I can't just eat salads for infinite hydration, or peppers. My relatively useless scanner room, I don't think I used this once to be honest. I realized I just should just make some scanner room range upgrades and bring them with me. Since all of my old ones vanished into the fucking ether. Alright, let's go. Let's get finish this game. Although, I suppose we aren't really done looking at my base, are we? I've got this wonderful set of grow beds. Not as much stuff as I really expected to be growing in the sample grow bed, because a lot of things that should have samples just don't, because the game isn't quite as finished as I was told it would be. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I needed to come outside. 
Let's throw myself out. First of all, my tri valve should be around here somewhere. I don't know where he is. Well, I hope he's okay, wherever he is. And I also don't know which one is Fred, since he's... Oh, this one must be Fred. He's so far away compared to the others. Hi, Fred. It's the end of the game. Not going to be seeing you much anymore. And there's Sam. Did a terrible thing releasing him into this biome. So that's the base. In its entirety. And that's my useless fabricator module. Let's go down into the depths and hope the game ends when I go there. Because I really really do not want to backtrack up here again. Fuck you, Crypto Sukus. Did I kill him with one hit? God damn. This thing is a tank, isn't it? Here is the one more Kyanite I'll need, I thought. Yeah, here we go. And that is all three components complete. Welcome aboard, Captain. Let's slap some scanner upgrades in here. There we go. And now we can see that if we had our scanner range upgrades, we would have had a big enough map that we'd be like, oh, we can move around. And we would eventually figure it out with the greater range. They were over here. This is where progress is. So, relative to me... There's no north marker on this, is there? Well, regardless, I have a prod suit that I can use as a marker. I was really just doing that to see how viable it was to use my scanner room to figure out where to go, and the answer was incredibly. There's the rock puncher. Let's head it. Oh, no! I'm being attacked by a shadow leviathan. Whatever will I do? I feel like Shadow Leviathans were aggressively misused. Forcing yourself, or forcing your player rather, to deal with Shadow Leviathans constantly also forces them to realize that they aren't a threat. They either need to be more threatening and less common, or they need to be less common so I don't get overexposed to them and realize they're kind of not a big deal. Because... When your players are laughing at your big in-game monster, that's a very bad thing. I have a hard time imagining someone finishing this game and still being afraid of the Shadow Leviathan. Like, you can't avoid them. They're everywhere down here. And you're going to realize very quickly they aren't very good at killing you, are they? Sounds like it's right behind me, doesn't it? I wonder how hard it was to see that. Like, if I was just missing it because I was a goober, or if it's actually quite hard to see. And this pillar right here makes it quite hard to see, actually. Oh! It actually is a bit of pop -in. I wonder if I ever looked right at it and it wasn't on my... Excuse me? <laughs> Alan, I don't know if we're going to make it your body, man. I've got some bad news about your body, Alan! <laughs> you son of a bitch! <laughs> Is my prawn suit just gone? <laughs> Wait, let's dock the prawn suit on here. <laughs> we need to put the prawn suit on this before it gets killed by the ground, Leviathan. Oh no. Fucking... At least he's free now. You can hit me a couple more times. It'll be fine. I've got two first aid kits on me. I don't want to lose any of these hard-earned vehicles. So far, this episode has not been doing a good job of convincing me that maybe I was wrong about all my cynicism towards the end of Subnautica. I don't know how long you've been watching for, but on my end, I've been recording for a little over 20 minutes. It is mind-numbingly tedious. The only reason I'm keeping myself entertained is because I'm talking about how much I hate the end of the game. All right. Let's do it. So, Alan, you said your people came here in search of a cure? I was a researcher. You were a scientist? Like me? 
My people regarded my scientific contributions with particular interest. As I said, like me. If that is your interpretation. So how did your valuable scientific mind wind up infected? Not my mind, my body. Perhaps you should build the next component. So you came here to search for a cure? I left the mission. Does that mean the bacteria got out on your watch? This subject is uncomfortable. If you would like to know more, I will ask that you first construct the final component. Because Alan keeps dodging the subject, and literally only because of that, I feel like Alan's gonna be like, no, it's a biological weapon that I made. It's just weird that he keeps dodging the subject so hard. This is the last piece. Soon I will be autonomous again. What will you do with your newfound freedom? I must return home to make amends. Amends? For the bacteria? There seems to be a lot you're not telling me. It is hard for me to find the words. I must collect my thoughts. We have all the necessary components. You may initiate body fabrication sequence from the terminal. You still owe me an explanation. I understand. Commencing storage medium fabrication. The escape of the bacterial was an accident. I thought my solution was foolproof. I was wrong. Did you cause the accident? Yes. Oh. I did not wish to speak about it. We can come back to this. I'm confused as to how exactly Alan can be directly responsible for this. Unless he's like taking blame for having it taken the sea emperor or the sea dragon, whichever it was that broke containment. Because my understanding is that Kara breaking containment was because they took a Leviathan's children and the Leviathan smashed apart the research building that they were doing the research in, thus releasing the bacteria. I don't know how Alan precisely blames himself for this, aside from, you know, just generally blaming himself because he was involved with the disaster. <laughs> research. Tit for tat. You've probed my mind. I scan your body. So he's this weird, like, straight Warhammer 40,000 centaur monster. All right, cool. Commencing David Chester. Did it work? Are we... It has been some time since I last stretched out in so many dimensions. Like waking from a dream. Are you scanning me, Alan? Whoa. Hey. You're really not in my head anymore? There are some remnants. Would you like your memories of me removed as well? Are you kidding? No way. You still owe me the end of your story. I told you I must return home. To assess. Repair. Make amends. Tell me more. When the bacteria escaped, it was my fault. I disobeyed the directive from my network. The fact that he has RGB is killing me. What was that? <laughs> we noticed that a species of Leviathan young produced an enzyme that is efficient against the bacteria. I thought if we incubated sea dragon eggs, we might expedite their hatching. I was not wrong. But... It would appear that sea dragon parents are stronger and more motivated than our facility was rated to handle. And the bacteria got out affecting everything. How many survived the outbreak back home? Are they still waiting for someone to bring back a cure? I do not know. Can I help? The fact that I withheld this information does not concern you. It was certainly manipulative. And I've also made my- It's not manipulative, it's just felt shame! To helping. I accept your help. Find me at the gate when you are ready. In the meantime, I must prepare. Signal location uploaded to PDA. This is exactly what I was afraid of. 
Alan, you motherfucker. All right, so I'm gonna go back through all those caves again and go to outpost zero where the gate is to end the game, I, I think. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if this is just a side quest, then I have no idea how I end the game because at this point it seems like I really should have the option to just radio my friends and be like, hey, yeah, I'm done. Found out what happened to my sister, got my answers, got vengeance, time to go. Like, I refuse to believe I don't have an exit plan for this planet, right? Surely, Robin had something in mind. Oh, hey, it's everyone's favorite snakey boy, the Shadow Leviathan. Attack me. After boost the side. All right, yeah, I can consistently dodge them if I'm actually paying attention and moving towards them. Nope. No, I can't. That was with after boost moving away, too. So it looks like... Unlike Subnautica 1 Reaper Leviathans, this dude can actually relatively easily intercept me. I wonder if he's faster than Chalicerate, or if that one Void Chalicerate I fought, I just got lucky against. Fault is a generous word for dodge with my truck and then left. At this point in the video though, or at this point in the video series, since I'm pretty sure this will be the last video I upload, or the second to last one, you are free to tell me literally anything that I have missed, because I'm at the point where I'm going to search the wiki to figure out what I've missed, basically. And the reason I mentioned that is I became aware that I never went under a thousand meters. I don't know what the prawn suit upgrade is for. He sounds quite angry, doesn't he? I'm sure I'll be fine. Welcome aboard, Captain. <sighs> The base goes back in the box, and we are out of here. Something developers have talked about. I haven't seen any like explicit confirmation of this. They mentioned that they made a lot of improvements to Subnautica's like mechanics. The things I talk about, pop-in. The game just having less lag, that sort of stuff. And they mentioned that they wanted to at some point have a patch where they backport some of that stuff to Subnautica. I think when or if that patch comes out, I'm probably going to replay Subnautica and just restart the 100% run that I lost. Because I don't want to play Subnautica with Brutal Poppin. I just don't. Like, after this, it will be hard to go back. But I would enjoy going back to Subnautica and comparing it to Below Zero, now that I've actually played Below Zero. I want to know how much of this is rose scented glasses and how much of it is Subnautica actually being a better game. Because Subnautica definitely still has its flaws, but I feel like it was more flawed as a game engine than as a game. Whereas Below Zero is a much better game engine and a much worse game. Or at least that's the way I feel. Speaking of the way I feel, I feel utterly unfazed by this Shadow Leviathan. If I feel anything, it's slight disdain because I've forgotten where I am. I think the path I just backtracked through Going from the bottom of Red Crystals, up through Crystals... Hello, Chalicer, you're the reason I'm talking about this. So what I was saying just now is... Going from the bottom of Red Crystals, up through Blue Crystals... Up through the, uh, caves... All of that... If I actually think about the route, I think I just went through almost every single leviathan spawn on the map. There are two chalicerates near the adult vent garden and one over the volcano, but I think I just passed every single shadow leviathan spawn point and one of the chalicerates. So when I talk about this game just grossly overexposing you to them, in my first playthrough of Subnautica, I never went to the mountains or dunes where most of the reapers are. I tried my best to avoid the ghosts that were in the Lost River and in the um, Grand Reef. It was only the sea dragons that I felt overexposed to because they were only clustered in the last areas. It just blows my mind how much I interact with the relatively small number of leviathans that are on this map. Also, something I saw on the Reddit that fucking kills me. I didn't realize this when I was reading my uh, databanks. But if we go to uh, research, indigenous life forms, fauna, 
And we got a carnivores. This is where the squid shark is. A leviathan class predator that is not in the leviathans category. There are just so many little things in Subnautica Below Zero where I feel like I've been told the game is finished, and it's just a little bit of a lie. Uh, the number of things that are not scannable or harvestable, the number of research entries that are like two sentences long at most, the number of research entries that are actually confusing, like the squid shark. I really did enjoy Below Zero for the most part. It's just that compared to Subnautica 1, I actually think it has a much worse game world. The backtracking at the very end is bad, like very bad. And the real problem is that the land segments are fucking atrocious. Also, I'm not quite sure how this rain works. Which is part of why the land segments are terrible, right? The land segments are terrible in large part because of the weather system, which apparently doesn't work that well to begin with. But this is it. We're coming up on what I think must be the end of the game. I thought Alan was a side thing and that I was going to figure out how to get off this planet. Evidently, I was very wrong about that. Evidently, the game ends with Robin having no idea what to do and helping out Alan, who's going to help us figure out how the game ends, because I'm very confused as to what Robin's plan for the rest of her life is currently. Fuck you, Alan. I didn't see you. I came back in a straight line. Are you preparing to leave, Alan? Yes. There is much to do. Alan feels like he walked out of a different fucking video game, doesn't he? Like, what is this shit? Do you still wish to leave with me? Beyond this teleport, there is no turning back. Are you kidding? I can't pass up a chance to see where architects come from. Besides, I really I didn't have any plan to get off the planet. I was like, fuck it, I guess I'll die down here. The others may be sick or angry if they live at all. Or you could find peace, family. I hope you are right. Please complete any business you still have on this planet. Join me on the other side when you are ready to leave. This is my end of game save. Let's go see what the ending is. And I'll probably have another video for Subnautica in the distant future, but not for a couple of days at least. All right, so now we've walked into the Skyrim game that he came from. Is, is anyone else disappointed that I walked into a snowy biome? Something about this is deeply upsetting to me that it's snowy where I went. Like, man, come on. Can I put to some fascinating different biome? Robin, you're just in time. The phase gate is opening. You've been hiding a phase gate? Okay, no, we're still on time. this right planet. Okay. Only for the last millennium. I feel be much better now. I thought we'd already oh, went through, like, the planetary gate. It was imperative to keep the homeworld safe. In hopes that the others survived. Yeah. Alright. I no longer feel as bad about showing up on an ice world after following him through. I misunderstood. I thought the phase gate is where we were. Will you help me prepare the ship? The energy masks must be moved into place. Well, <laughs> this is, is this the ending cutscene, guys? I don't need to report bugs right now. Um, what exactly do you want me to do, my friends? Is there another one down here I need to be working on? Okay, so now I have sick jumps and slow falling. I have no idea what he wants me to be doing. Alan, can you give me more instructions? I don't think you want me to stand on your head. You know, for what should be the dramatic end of game moment, do you want me to lift up pillars? 
This is not what I thought you meant when you said align gates. I spent the whole game looking at these and not being able to interact with them. So expecting me to intuitively know that I'm supposed to come mess with these is a real bad expectation to have. Maybe not these necessarily, but alien cabling. Turn to me and I will initiate ship assembly. I don't know, man. It looks pretty assembled. Thank you. The masks are in place. The energy field is ready. There is no time to lose. You mean a ship to get through that way? All right. Checks out. Not what I thought we were doing. Join me, Robin. I apologize. The levitator was calibrated for heavier bodies. I would have helped you to your feet, but as you can see, I have been fully integrated with the ship. Is this permanent? Nothing is permanent. Are you ready to go? Yeah, you could say that. Ready to leave the past behind. Good. Please brace yourself, and then we will depart. Um. Well, I'm waiting for a brace prompt right now. There we go. That's exactly what I thought I needed to do. I just couldn't. Launching in three, two, one. insane space nonsense I was expecting to happen when I first went through the previous gate. Is this whole world gone? What will we find when we get there? If I am the last of my kind, I will experience the sorrow of 10,000 souls daily. <laughs> okay, no, we have more gates to go through. For a second, I thought we were having an Alderaan moment. And if they survived? With you, I am ready to face whatever awaits. I'm not sure how I feel about that ending. I think I feel overwhelmingly negative about it. <laughs> I think what should have been a cutscene was a very awkward gameplay segment that Robin apparently had no plan for how to get off the planet, which was basically a death sentence then. <laughs> that Robin was cool with giving up the entirety of interacting with humanity on the assumption that it would all work out by going to the architect homeworld. And also the ending seems like blatantly setting up for a sequel with like no clear indication of anything about what that sequel would be like, because it doesn't even seem like it would really be a Subnautica game at this point. Oh. I really liked playing Subnautica. When I was in the moment, when I was exploring water biomes, anything above the crystal caves, I was having a good time and really enjoying the game. But the more I got taken out of the experience, the more I had to backtrack for whatever reason, the more time I spent on land, and the more I ended up thinking about the game instead of playing it, 
slowly but surely my opinion has fell further and further on Below Zero. I still enjoyed it, I don't know if I could recommend it heartily like I could the original Subnautica, but I did still really enjoy it, and I mean nothing else is scratching the Subnautica itch, so I'm glad I played it. But unlike the original Subnautica, I can't really imagine wanting to go back and play it again. The game world is just so small. I don't know what else I would do. I feel like the game is completed from my perspective. I will say this though. This is not going to be the last video in Subnautica Below Zero. We're going to do at least one more. It's not going to be tomorrow. Something else is going to be tomorrow. But based on what I find in the wiki and what people say in the comments, I will have one more video where I go find some various things around the world that I've missed, because I'm sure I've missed a couple of things. Specifically, my tri-valves in the biopsy, in the biopsy? In the data bank, were labeled as tri-valve blue, I think? Which to me implies, I mean, why call them blue tri-valves, right? There must be other colors of them. I only found two cuttlefish? That can't be right, can it? I mean, it's a smaller game, but I'm pretty sure there's more than one cuttlefish location in this game, so I think I missed a couple. But, that's it for now. This has been Subnautica Below Zero. In spite of all its numerous flaws, I enjoyed playing it, but it has so many flaws that I don't truly know I could recommend it to somebody. And honestly, if they ever backpatch the improvements to the game engine to Subnautica 1, I don't think I'd ever recommend Below Zero over the first Subnautica. Which is a sad thing for me to say. The land segments were too bad. There were too many biomes that were small, too many biomes with tremendously limited visibility. Imagine trying to navigate the Lost River if in the Lost River you could only see about 100 meters in front of you. If there was just this overlayered fog across the whole thing. Because that's what the Crystal Caves are. They're the size of the Lost River. But you can't see very far and they have way more Leviathans in them with way less room to avoid them. There's just so many little things that all add up to heavily detract from the experience. I enjoyed it. I think that's obvious when you're watching my videos, except for the ones where I'm on land, where it's obvious that I have some problems with the game. But I'm not going to keep rambling on. I'm done for now. I've been Rather Incoherent. This has been Subnautica Below Zero. I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope I can make at least one more video out of the things that I missed. If you did like the series or this video specifically, then please like, comment, subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And I'll see you in the next one, whatever that is.